Well, let's find out more about who's carrying out the mission out there in space. So Judge Gang, as we said, uh, he is the uh, veteran of this on this crew. He is 55 years old. He joined the China National Space Administration's astronaut program in 1996, and he was chosen for the very first group of Chinese astronauts in 1998. And Jai commanded the Shenzhou 7 space mission in 2008. That's when he became the first Chinese to conduct a spacewalk. And there's 41-year-old Wang Yaping, the only woman on the team. She was an elite pilot in the Chinese Air Force and began her space career in 2010 as the first woman recruited by the Astronauts Corps of the People's Liberation Army. And now she is, of course, the first woman to board the Tiangong Space Station. She was in the spotlight in 2013 when she joined the Shenzhou 10. Ye Guangfu is also 41 and a former Air Force pilot. He was the first Chinese to take part in a cave training organized by the European Space Agency. The three Taikonauts have all been thoroughly prepared for possible scenarios during the space war. So let's take a look at their trainings ahead of the mission. The Shenzhou 13 crew will have to perform two to three spacewalks. To get ready for that, they all must undergo ground trainings and meet certain standards. We have a female taikonaut in our group, and a woman's physique is very different from that of a man. So on the ground, she must be able to perform all the tasks, including the whole spacewalk procedure. The three of us need to back each other up. We all must have the ability to operate the robotic arm or complete extravehicular crawling. Jai Zhegang, the commander of the mission, performed China's first spacewalk during the Shenzhou 7 mission. As a senior taikonaut, Jai always shares his experiences with others during daily trainings. Jai Zhegang is more like a teacher than a commander, and no matter what you do, he always encourages you and gives you confidence and energy. Instructors often record videos of Jai's trainings for demonstrations. I did learn a lot from him. This is Wang Yaping's second space flight and comes eight years after she first went to space on the Shenzhou 10 mission. Wang earned the title of China's first space teacher after delivering a televised science lecture to an audience of over 60 million school children in 2013. She will give a second lesson during the Shenzhou 13 mission. Wang is very good at computer operations, data transmission, and detailed tasks. Wang is always positive, hardworking, and meticulous. She is also very careful, thoughtful, and understanding. A new face in China's space mission. Ye Guangfu has actually been part of the program for 11 years. Ye is familiar with computer operation and data transmission. He is smart and full of energy. He may have to play a larger part in scientific research. Ye Guangfu is the first taikonaut to participate in the European Space Agency underground training course. His outstanding performance was very inspiring for other taikonauts. I feel very happy and honored to be able to work with him. The Shenzhou 13 crew has also been reviewing the spacewalks performed during the Shenzhou 12 mission to get ready for the big day in space. Now, our reporter Liu Jiaxin joins us live for more on the spacewalk. Jiaxin, what can you tell us? Yes. Right, Jiaxin, this is the first extravehicular activities for Shenzhou 13 crews. And Ye Guangfu is now in a cabin conducting command and coordination missions. While experienced astronauts Jai Zhigang and female astronaut Wang Yaping are heading to their working positions in two ways. One is carried by a robotic arm, the other is crawling on a module. As for the main job, we know that a space station is made up of several modules. The first and the core module of China's space station was launched in April. Officials say the future experimental module features a smaller robotic arm to assist the larger one already in place. So during their spacewalk, Jai Zhigang and Wang Yaping need to install two devices, one called robotic arm combination adapter, the other one is a suspension device. These two devices will help the large and small robotic arms coordinate a wider range of actions for more capabilities in the future. And after astronaut Jai Zhigang finishes his work in on the arm, uh, he will conduct a simulation capture to verify that the tool works properly. He won't be doing this alone, he will be assisted by Wang Yaping. And the whole space walks take about six hours. So working in space is not as light as most imagine. 
astronauts have to bear the weight of more than 120 kilograms of spacesuit. General designer of uh, China Space Station. Earlier, I talked to him. Uh, Zhang Wei said that uh, there is a pressure the difference between the EVA spacesuit and the vacuum. This difference limits the flexibility of the suit and the ability of people to operate in space. But the EVA spacesuit is astronauts' most necessary life support system, and they train hundreds of hours uh, to adapt to it. Back to you, Dale. And Yasin, so we know the crew conducted an emergency evacuation drill shortly before this spacewalk. What did that involve? Yes, Jaya. Well, due to the complex and dangerous space environment, impacts from external debris uh, debris are one of the main threats to the space station. In outer space, where there is no air resistance, objects can travel very fast, and impact can be severe. We watch that a lot in a science fiction movie. And in orbit, emergency evacuation training is necessary for astronauts to be fully prepared for such dangerous circumstances. The Shenzhou 13 astronauts have conducted their first in-orbit emergency evacuation training before their first EVA. So the drill simulates the sim situation for astronauts to evacuate safely when the core module encounters some impact and loses its internal pressure. So that's all for me. Back to you, Dian. Thank you so much for that, Liu Jiaxing in Beijing. The Shenzhou 13 crew are wearing a new spacesuit for their first uh, extravehicular activities. Now, this suit is of three colors: red and yellow for the Chinese national flag, and a space blue. And they were carried on the Tianzhou 3 cargo craft to the space station back in September. And the astronauts uh, tried those on for the first time in, on November 2nd. The chief designer of the spacesuit said the lower limb and joint parts are optimized to better fit thin astronauts, and the suit can support extravehicular activities for eight hours. Our spacesuit is like a small aircraft. It can provide astronauts with necessary support, such as pressure protection, thermal protection, and oxygen for eight hours. This is the first time it will be used out of the cabin. Well, let's get more insight on this uh, from Professor Yang Yuguang of the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. He joins us here, Professor Yang. So here we are again, another spacewalk. Uh, and thanks so much for uh, coming into our show and talking to us about this. So we just heard about the uh, spacesuit there that these astronauts are currently, you know, on the spacewalk and 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 doing this in uh, 120 kilos of weight. How this is a, a different spacesuit from the one that we saw in the last spacewalk, isn't it? Essentially speaking, there's no uh, much difference between the first, the second, and this third uh, EVA spacesuit, uh, all have the same design. You see that because, you know, that the uh, outer space has the same crucial environment. We must deal with the uh, pr problem of the, as your colleague has man uh, mentioned, the threatens of from the uh, meteoroid and the uh, space debris, and also uh, in the extreme high and extreme to low temperature, and the mo most important thing is the vacuum condition. So the uh, design of the space uh, spacesuit is equal, uh, but uh, there, uh, as your colleague has mentioned, uh, little bit improvement. You see that Ya Ping is not so tall like his two, uh, her two colleagues. So mm. the uh, the pants of the spacesuit, uh, of her spacesuit, uh, were carried by, by the Tianzhou 3 cargo ship to the station. And it is optimized and uh, she will feel more comfortable wearing this spacesuit. We can still remember that during the ground training, you see that uh, because you know that uh, every astronaut performing EVA must be trained in the mm -hmm. what we call the uh, neutral buoyancy pool. But during that training, because the spacesuit, we only have one. So so Ya Ping have to fit something uh, uh, near he, around his foot because the, 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 the boot is too big for her. So this is very interesting, but this time she has her own uh, spacesuit and be more comfortable. I believe that she can perform the EVA more perfectly. And Are they all tailor-made to each individual astronaut? Uh, actually speaking, the spacesuit can fit for uh, the uh, astronaut uh, with a head from 1.6 meter to oh. 1.8 meter. Theoretically speaking, the first and the second uh, EVA spacesuit uh, marked with the color red and blue. Uh, oh. Yaping can also wear that spacesuit, but not so comfortable oh. like the third one. Not as good a fit. Yes. Oh, I see. And, and they can last for up to eight hours out there. I mean, these astronauts on this current spacewalk, they're going to be out there for six whole hours. I mean, that's uh, a long time to endure, isn't it? Mm, uh, this is because... Uh, on one expect the 
operation today is really complex. You see that they must install the uh, adapter for the future connection between the big arm and the small arm. Mm. You see that they currently use the robotic arm on board our uh, space station, on board our Tianhe One core module, we usually call that a big arm. Because the length is 10 meters, the mass is about 70, uh, 700 uh, kilograms. Uh, in the future, we will also have a secondary arm called the small arm, right. which we will brought to the station by the Wentian uh, experimental module. Uh, and usually they will work separately, but in some necessary cases, they can be connected together to form arm with a total length about 15 meters. Mm. So in some cases, it is necessary uh, for a very far object, uh, a place, and also, uh, you know, the second, uh, the, the small arm has more precise operations. So this is also very necessary. But first things first, we must install the uh, suspension device and the uh, adapter first. And the suspension device for the arm? Okay. Yes, uh, this, uh, no, uh, the, the, the suspension device for the adapter. Uh, the adapter will connect the, the big arm from one end and uh, connect the small arm from the other end. You uh. see, there are other adapters all over the station on the surface of the station. So the arm can uh, walk like a worm uh, from one side to the other, one adapter to, uh, uh, to uh, another. Uh, but that's only for one arm. Uh, if you want to connect the uh, different arm together, you need an adapter, a special de uh, designed and uh, uh, manufactured one. So, uh, Professor Yang, I mean, at the, you know, at the start of our program, we talked about so many firsts when it comes to uh, this particular mission, you know, the first woman out there, um, you know, uh, and, but, when we talk about the significance of this particular mission, looking in the, the general, the overview of China's entire space program, would you say what the astronauts are doing now is more important than what the last crew did when they did their spacewalk? Uh yeah, you are right. Today's EVA is very particular for China aerospace. Although you know that uh, all the missions uh, from the Shenzhou uh, 12 crew and from the Shenzhou 13 crew are belongs to the what we call the technology verification and the demonstration phase. Uh, this phase is can be recognized as a preparation for the formal construction of our uh, Professor, space I'm sorry, station. I'm just going to interrupt you quickly. So uh, we're actually going to be looking at some footage now from uh, the spacewalk, and this is taken from the camera outside China's space station. So uh, let's just take a look at that now. And uh, just to recap, you know, the three astronauts yes. have already exited the uh, core module, but the footage will be, I think, believe of them so, uh, exiting what you what you see now is a uh, video from the uh, uh, from, uh, from, from the panoramic camera mm. and, and now it is changed uh, it is in the note this it, is inside right and this is I mean this is obviously before they actually exited yeah, or yeah, is this yes. uh, on the left is in the note or the airlock so we can see that the one astronaut is preparing for the EVA and the airlock professor young just remind us what that cabin does in particular uh, well, the airlock is the, uh, at the front of the station. Uh, it is also the node, uh, which have uh, three docking ports, uh, sorry, which have uh, two docking ports, uh, two bursting ports, and one hatch for the EVA. Uh, you, uh, just now, uh, what I mentioned is the hatch for the EVA on the top of this node. Uh, it looks like a sphere, uh, and it is already much bigger than our uh, orbital modules of the Shenzhou spaceship before. So the uh, the astronauts have enough volume in this uh, hatch, uh, sorry, in this airlock to uh, assemble their spacesuit and mm. test their spacesuit. And that would be Jai Jigong right now putting exactly. on his uh, EVA. So I mean, this is this is what he has to wear inside. This is inside the spacesuit, isn't it? This is uh, like a suit this, uh, they inside are now in, the actual. Yeah, they, they are EVA. now inside the air uh, airlock. Yeah. Uh, you can see on the top of the screen is uh, is a hatch. So it looks pretty complex what he's putting on there. Exactly. I mean, it's got what so I mentioned, many layers. The, the volume of this airlock is much bigger than our uh, orbital module of the Shenzhou space spaceship. You know that during the Shenzhou 7 mission in 2008, uh, Mr. Jai Shigang uh, had no other choices but to assemble his spacesuit in the orbital module. The orbital module of the Shenzhou spaceship act as the airlock of that mission. Oh, would that have made it more difficult for him? Y yes, because the volume is too narrow. Oh. And uh, uh, several years later, Mr. Liu Boming has given a lecture in the international conference. He said that the, uh, they can only move their hands between the space suit. Oh. So you can see how narrow it is. So this is uh, this would be an interesting uh, thing to, do, to to actually ask you about. So we obviously, obviously the other astronauts, uh, the previous crew, they've come back from their trip, they've uh, their journey, and they've obviously given feedback about um, their experience. So do you know if they had any uh, feedback that would help to improve on this next this current mission? 
Yes, uh, you know that uh, before just before the launch of the Shenzhou 13 crew uh, to this uh, tanker 1.0, the Shenzhou 13 crew also have meetings with the Shenzhou 12 crew. Mm. Although Shenzhou 12 crew as just now is also uh, taking breaks and uh, uh, being careful, uh, be, uh, being being take, uh, taking care very carefully because it's just uh, come back from the space. They uh, need a readaptation of the gravity field, but they also uh, have communication with this uh, Shenzhou uh, 13 crew with all kinds of operations uh, on board the station, especially the EVA. You see that, uh, theoretically speaking, our spacesuit can be used uh, for 15 times. So uh, this time, uh, you may notice that the, uh, this, this spacesuit with the red belt uh, mm. on, on the surface, uh, the Mr. Jajikan is wearing this spacesuit. Uh, we call him uh, Zero One. Mm. Uh, so, uh, so this uh, spacesuit also been wear by Mr. Nie Haisheng and Mr. Liu Wenming last mm. time. Uh, and they can uh, give their experience uh, and also some optimization of the procedures for assemble testing this spacesuit and for the procedures of going out of the station. Because you know that the uh, spacesuit itself is uh, very complex. We can call that a minimized uh, spacecraft, an independent spacecraft. It has a portable life support system, we can, which can provide oxygen, which can reduce uh, carbon dioxide, and mm -hmm. also uh, to perform the thermal control to make the astronauts comfortable. So just a quick recap for our audience here, uh, if you're just tuning in, we are looking at some footage uh, from inside China's space station. This is of uh, the three Taikonauts who've been up there since mid-October, and they are conducting their first spacewalk on this mission, and uh, they have a veteran astronaut with them, the uh, first Chinese man to ever take a spacewalk, and also now we've got the first ever Chinese uh, woman astronaut taking a spacewalk. That's uh, Wang Yaping. So, uh, this footage is from early on when they were preparing and getting ready to exit the uh, station. And they're conducting, uh, the, we, believe, we believe it should last about six whole hours. Well, Professor Yang, so six hours out there, uh, do you think the experience would be very different for Wang Yaping compared to uh, Jai Zhigang? Uh, from the view of technology, there is no uh, much difference. But uh, from uh, the experience of uh, uh, a, a human, it mm. is quite different. You know that uh, because you know that there are two kinds of EVA. One kind of EVA will be, uh, uh, have it, has been conducted by the Apollo astronauts on the lunar surface. So there are gravity. Uh, so although it is quite different from operation on the ground, but still uh, with the gravity, their operation is easier. The other kind of EVA is performed in microgravity in environment, in orbit. So this kind of EVA, usually we, can, we, we may notice that the movement of the astronauts mainly based on, the, the, on their arms. So it's raised a very high requirement to the strength of their arms. Uh, of the upper body strength. Yeah, yes. So uh, it is quite different. You know that uh, comparing with uh, men and women, although both have their own uh, advantages, but uh, you, honestly speaking, well, uh, the of strength course, of yeah. men is, uh, is stronger than, than women. Yeah, so it is really tough. Uh, you know that during the training, as your colleague has already mentioned, during the training of the uh, EVA uh, uh, in, the, in the neutral buoyancy probe, Yuri Yaping is totally exhausted after the training. Mm. And she cannot, she even don't have the strength to raise the chopstick. Oh, wow. So you can see how hard for her. So that's quite different. But for the, you know, that uh, both Ya Ping and Mr. Zhai Zhigang mm. wears the second generation Fei-Tian space suit. It is uh, greatly improved uh, comparing with the uh, 2008 the Shenzhou 7 mission. That is the first generation. Mm. So uh, you, you have already asked a question why we took six hours. You know that uh, one aspect is that the operation today is quite complex and we need a so long period. Another reason is that uh, with this chance we must uh, test our spacesuit. Notice that until today we only have four EVAs including this one. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, comparing with other countries the US and Russia have brought hundreds of EVA on board the International Space Station and during other space missions. So although our Fitian space suit is already as good as those made by other countries, but mm -hmm. still we need more practice and more experience in this field. Is it, would you say it's more advanced in some ways than the other spacesuits? You may notice that during the first EVA of the Shenzhou 12 mission, Mr. Liu Wenming, when, she, when he when he go out of the hatch, he said, "Wow, it's so beautiful." <laughs> yeah. Do you means, remember that? Yeah, I was yeah, with yeah, you yeah, watching you guys, that. Yes. <laughs> this means that he feels very comfortable. Mm. If he don't feel very comfortable, he cannot say these kind of sentences. So uh, this means that the thermal control uh, uh, we designed of the Fitian spacesuit is very, very perfect. Mm -hmm. It's very uh, dif uh, difficult task. You know that in extreme temperature. Oh, well, there we are.
Okay. 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 We heard the voice. Yes, and that's uh, Jai Jigang, the commander, saying, you know, he's he's out there, he's out of the station, and he feels good. And there you go, a little exchange with the ground uh, control crew there. Well, this and is also the video from the panoramic camera. Uh, we can see also the, the huge yeah, solar panels. And he's talking now with Wang Yaping, I see yeah, yeah, yeah. passing some equipment yeah, over. Yeah. Yaping will move on the, along the surface of the station. And again, he says he feels good out there too, so again, that's another reflection on uh, this spacesuit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And Mr. Jai Zhigang will uh, move with the assistance of the robotic arm. So they have different tasks. So unlike last time, Professor Young, they're not tethered to the robotic arm, are they? I mean, the last time we watched uh, the, the spacewalk with the, with the Shenzhou 12 crew. As you ask, uh, Mr. Jai Zhigang will be tethered on, on both the robotic arm. It can be uh, easier for him to move faster right. from the hatch to the place for, all, for their operations. But in this one, it looks like they're just... Oh, they're this is from the camera mounted on the helm. Uh, right. helmet of the astronaut, so it, it's moving. Right, but even so, they're, they're, they're not moving tethered to the, the arms right now, or will uh, they be doing that a bit later? Will they be mounting the robotic arm, or are they moving essentially freely, and as you're saying, kind of relying on upper body strength to kind of move themselves uh, along the space station? Or heading so you can see the, the suspension device. Uh, Mr. Jai Zhigang is holding this device. Right. And uh, and the next step, he will be uh, mounted himself on, on the adapter of the uh, of the robotic arm. And this is something they would have done a simulation of uh, on Earth for their training, right? Is this in the what what I mentioned is the neutral buoyancy pool? Mm -hmm. So uh, because we have buoyancy, it can simulate the microgravity environment. Oh, they, they were already in the shadow of the Earth. And they would have done so, this what, a little bit dark. many oh, yeah. many times. Oh, exactly. Not only the normal operations, but also some abnormal cases, they must also be trained for this kind of dangerous uh, things. So what kind of, yeah, I mean, that, that last package uh, we were looking at earlier was talking about all these different uh, scenarios they have to prepare for. But just, Professor Young, talk us through some of you know, the, the major ones that they could encounter, some scenarios that they, they would have to be uh, thoroughly ready for. Well, you know, that's uh, during some emergency cases, for instance, uh, if if the meteoroid or a space debris hits the body of the astronauts, mm. there may be a hole and the may comes to the leakage of the gas from the, their spacesuit and the uh, decompression of their spacesuit. It may threaten their lives. So in this case, they must go back to the hatch as soon as possible. Uh, in fact, okay. during the first EVA performed by Shenzhou 12 mission, okay. uh, Mr. Tang Hongbo just uh, simulated this case mm. and go back to the station as, uh, with the fastest speed. And how fast would that be, though, really? I mean, considering mm, maybe the less conditions than, that Maybe less than 20 minutes, I believe. 20 minutes maybe to get less back than. to the space station. But that's this is already very fast, did you see? <laughs> I believe you, but that that's, doesn't seem like... Uh, because, you know, that they can only, you, you know, that's, as we've already seen, they can only depend on their arms for moving. Right. And always they must have a, space, uh, a safe belt, uh, fixed on the, uh, on, on the handles of the surface of the station. That's to avoid the uh, drifting, uh, floating uh, away from the station. So that's very necessary. So that also means that these EVA suits have to be uh, well designed to kind of cope with this sort of uh, emergency situation, right? So exactly. should it be broken So anyway? there are emergency or a backup uh, air uh, supply uh, or oxygen supply. So in this case, uh, in this case uh, but that cannot last for a very long period. Mm. Uh, just in this case, uh, just enough to the, get back. Yeah. So just before Half the ex resulting of this oxygen uh, uh, backup, you must go back to the airlock. What is the oxygen system. supply backup time? Do you know? Uh, the, it, 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 it depends on the length of the total mission. Right. Uh, uh, Theoretically speaking, the normal, uh, the normal operation uh, span for the spacesuit is eight hours, as you have already mm -hmm. uh, described. Uh, but in an emergency case, it can work long, uh, longer, maybe, oh, uh, maybe, 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 maybe half hour, maybe one hour. And uh, earlier, our reporter was telling us about how uh, just before this, they um, they also did an emergency drill. Yeah. Right. So they practiced uh, a scenario where the core module would be losing pressure, 
uh, malfunctioning, so they'd have to get back to the Shenzhou 13 capsule that they came on uh, yeah, to yeah. get back to Earth. So, and, and they managed to do this in a few yeah. minutes? They managed to yes. exit in a few yes. minutes? You see, good time? You see, the space debris, uh, very, very, very small debris, can threaten the life of the uh, astronaut when they're performing EVA. Uh, well, a bigger space debris can threaten the spacecraft itself. Well, yeah. Uh, now we can see that Mr. Judge Gang is already on board the robotic arm. Ah, I see now, right? So he's tethered yes, uh, and ready to he, go. He's wearing the spacesuit with the red, uh, red belt. And oh. this uh, equipment that he's just taken out of the core module, uh, taken out of the space station. Yes, that yes. Is and the, uh, uh, I believe that uh, the, the device were uh, de de delivered by Miss Wang Yaping to him. And do you, this device, what would it be used oh. for? This is for. You can see, uh, I believe that's a toolkit. You can see all kinds ah, of tools. Okay. <laughs> so this is also a view from the uh, from uh, from from the space from the helmet of the spacesuit. You can see uh, that it is moving. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you know, we our focus is all tuned on the two astronauts that are actually outside of the space station, but. Then there's Ye Guangfu who is actually conducting something really important to this, and that's the support that he has to give from inside uh, the space station. So what would that involve? Uh, you know that we have three measures to control the robotic arm. One is from the ground. We have the remote control uh, by the by the ground uh, command center uh, to 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 control the movement of the robotic arm. You know that the second measure is by the astronauts inside the station. You may notice that uh, in the cabin there are uh, three big screens. Uh, just below screen uh, is the control uh, control panel of mm -hmm. the robotic arm. There are th uh, there are two or three handles. With these handles, they can control the movements of the handle. But moreover, you the, you know that we have the third measure. Uh, they're on board the devices uh, to oh, fix the uh, astronauts uh, to the robotic arm. The uh, the the the, the, the astronauts can stop yeah. the can movement the of the arm. In emergency case. Sorry, Professor Yang, just to interrupt you quickly. Uh, let's just uh, take a look at this footage now. So, yeah, yeah, and that is Wang Yaping, yep, coming out. There we go. There's China's uh, first woman on a spacewalk. Not just first woman yes, on the you, space you station, can, but also can, the first woman. You can see that Yaping wears the spacesuit with the, with the yellow belt. So she's wearing now this new spacesuit. But you said earlier that uh, Jai Zhigong is wearing the uh, spacesuit from. Uh, that the yeah. other Jet Gang wearing the red one, the, the the one with the red belt. Right. Well, just to remind all our audiences, we were just looking at some uh, footages from China's space station of uh, the Shenzhou 13 crew, a crew of three, up there taking their first spacewalk, and they've been up there since mid October, and they will be staying there for six months in total, helping to build China's first space station, the first space station, the Tiangong. And uh, so Professor Yang and I were just looking at all that and talking about the spacesuits. So that one is uh, the uh, Yang Yaping there is wearing uh, the new generation, the most yeah, yeah. recent spacesuit there that's tailored for slimmer fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And so, so, so the pants is uh, smaller, so she feel more comfortable wearing this spacesuit. Uh, uh, not dedicated for female astronauts, but for those uh, uh, for those astronauts in the future with a similar uh, height of Yaping, uh, comparing with Yaping, they can also wear this spacesuit. Will be uh, also more comfortable for them because the first two ones is a little bit bigger for right. them. And of course, we can expect uh, more women up there in the future. Exactly. And six hours out there, I mean, that's got to be uh, pretty exhausting, right? After six hours, these astronauts would, uh, I mean, we're probably expecting them to be able to, to, be, to be sweating lots, and, but this spacesuit would be able to uh, uh, provide for a comfortable condition for them during this time. Uh, well, you know that uh, in the helmet, there are two, uh, uh, two kind of things. Uh, on the left, there is a pipe which have, uh, provides drinking, drinkable water for them. And on the right, uh, there are also some uh, simple food mm -hmm. uh, providing energy. Uh, also, you know that uh, before, the, uh, before the EVA, they must wear the, uh, what we call the, the maximum abo uh, uh, absorbency uh, garment, a diaper. Ah, uh, right, right. <laughs> you know that of uh, course, for, yeah. for so long period, long uh, they then. must drink water, but also they have to pee. So uh, it is very necessary for, this, for them to, can, to have this kind of, uh, what I mentioned, the, the maximum absorbency diamond, garment. This is especially designed for two grams of this kind of material. Mm -hmm. It can absorb more than one kilograms of urine. 
So it is very effective. And you know, that's, this is uh, one of the very typical uh, transplanting of space technologies in our daily life uh, mm. for, our, for, for the diapers, for babysitters. And also, you know, that uh, during their uh, EVA, uh, you've already mentioned, uh, they can feel very uncomfortable if the thermal design is incorrect. So we use what we call the water sublimator uh, to reduce the heat. Uh, actually speaking, with the cool coolant, the coolant is water. Mm. So you will, uh, use water uh, to bring the heat from the body to the outer space. Generally speaking, uh, during the EVA, because the uh, the movements is, has is so intensive, uh, they can produce 600 watts of heat uh, wow. during their activities. Yeah, so you talked there about, you know, uh, the technologies up there in the suit that, that can be applied to our everyday lives, uh, Professor Young. So, you know, we, we're talking about six months up there on the space station and they're going to be conducting a whole range of experiments, not just spacewalks, right? So uh, there's going to be medical related experiments, what kinds of stuff. Can you talk us through some of them? Uh, exactly. You know, that's uh, actually speaking, uh, other experiments will be done when the two uh, experimental modules uh, go into outer space, the Wenting and the Mengting modules. So these two modules have more uh, scientific research tracks uh, on board the station. Uh, you know, that's the Tianhe core module. The major task of this module is to operate and charge of the whole station. For mm -hmm. instance, the attitude control, the uh, orbital control, the management of power supply, the communication and the thermal control. Uh, but also, uh, as you have already asked, uh, there are some uh, certain uh, scientific research tracks inside the station. For instance, we have uh, uh, scientific research tracks mainly engaged in space medicine. Right. And also biology, and also we have skin another, care. I hear is one of them as well. Right? Uh, for instance, they will check their uh, cardiovascular system right. uh, periodically, and we will take uh, take uh, taking you know, blood uh, samples mm -hmm. uh, for a certain period, maybe uh, every every week or every two weeks. From the, uh, the astronauts are the objects of scientific research on themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, they you, you know that they have exercise every day, and the loss of bones and the weakening and the attenuation of the, our uh, cardiovascular system and our muscle system also must be uh, studied. You know that we already have the experience of the three, three months long, uh, uh, it is also a long duration in space, and it has already been, been proved because you know that the Shenzhou 12 crew, our three uh, astronauts are in very good status and the, their recovery is also very normal. So it proves that our measures, uh, the nutrition, the exercise every day is, is effective in uh, preventing them from losing of bones and mm -hmm. also the weakening of muscles. But that, not, that, that, that doesn't mean that it's effective for six months. Uh, so this time we still have to perform this kind of study and also there are all kinds of instruments monitoring their parameters uh, uh, on, in the orbit and also by the ground control. Uh, so this time the uh, space medicine and also the uh, space biology is, will also be a very important part for their study because they have, as you have already mentioned, they have six months long so they have more chance to perform this kind of study. Moreover, you see... And a lot of these, uh, some of the projects were ones that were pitched by other countries as well, right? It's not just Chinese-led projects, it's, it's ideas pitched by other countries too. Not now. No? You see that uh, we've already okay. selected nine experiments from 17 countries, but usually uh, as uh, as mentioned by the chief designer, Mr. Zhou Jianping uh, of the China Men's Space Program, uh, these ex experiments, the equip equip equipments for these kind of ex uh, experiments mm. will uh, be brought to the station by the Tianzhou cargo ship uh, after construction of the station. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, maybe after talking. 2022. Was there so, any of the, uh, is there any particular project amongst these that you would really like to see uh, being conducted? Yes, uh, some are conducted on uh, what we have already discussed, space medicine and uh, mm -hmm. biology. Some of will be also engaged in the, uh, the, the fluid dynamics in microgravity uh, environment. Is that what uh, you find most interesting? Uh, we already have this kind of environment uh, on board this station now, because I have already asked, uh, mentioned that there are two to three uh, scientific research tracks on board this Tianhe one. Right. One is, uh, one is uh, for space medicine and one is for the, uh, uh, for the fluid dynamics. Uh, in the microgravity environment. And another is uh, one, it's very interesting, has an automatic uh, hanging device, which can have no contact with other objects, and it can perform, provide a more perfect microgravity environment for, mm. for uh, study the phenomena in physics. Uh, so this so is it also- So just suspends by itself. Uh, it has the control by the uh, airflow 
uh, so it can have more slight change of its movements on the station. Mm -hmm. Although you, you know that uh, our astronaut in space is in a microgravity environment, but not zero, not strictly zero. Uh, zero. So uh, in many cases, if we want to have a more precise uh, scientific research on some certain uh, physical uh, phenomena, we need this kind of improvement. So it is very interesting. Moreover, in the future, we will also have space astronomy and other studies, for, for instance, maybe uh, observing the Earth and mm. other, uh, other items. So uh, I should also emphasize that uh, the uh, EVA performed today is also very important for future scientific research, not only for the maintenance, repair, and assembling of the station. In the future, many of the instruments for scientific research will be mounted outside the station. Uh, mm. So, uh, you know that today the uh, two devices were mounted outside the station and in the future uh, some, uh, some devices will be dedicated completely for research works, not for the maintenance. So one other thing that will be interesting about this uh, mission is that uh, during the six month stay, so Wang Yaping, she's going to be giving a uh, lecture on physics, isn't she, to students here on Earth. So uh, what do you think that will entail? That's fantastic. You know that Jia Ping is always uh, or recognized as a teacher one. <laughs> uh, so you, you can you can still remember that during the, her first uh, space lecture in 2013 uh, mm -hmm. during the Shenzhou 10 and the Tiangong 1 mission, more than 60 million pupils and uh, middle school students watched Tune her lecture. In. Wow! How can you imagine that? So uh, teacher Jia Ping is very famous. I think that this is also very important. <laughs> Actually, yes. And also, you know that uh, it is very interesting and very meaningful for us. You know that uh, it also encourages the young people to choose science and engineering as their lifespan career. Right. So this is very important for us. Uh, for us. And today, many uh, outstanding young people in space field uh, are the students of Yaping. Yeah, and of course, I mean, I mean what, great, what better incentive can there be to you know, really delve into these subjects by seeing somebody who's actually built on this and achieved you know, with something like this, being up in space, you know, completing something really quite, quite astounding for Chinese space development. Well, Professor Yang, it's uh, great speaking to you. Thank you so much for joining us here You're in the welcome. studio to talk through another spacewalk. And we've got more to come in the uh, next six months, don't yes. we? Another yes. two spacewalks. We are witness of the history. That's right, that's right. Thank you so much. Well, uh, in October, the three Taikonauts embarked on China's longest ever crewed mission for space station construction. So let's take a look back at some key moments of the Shenzhou 13 mission so far. On October 16th, the Shenzhou 13 spacecraft was launched with three Taikonauts aboard. It's the 21st flight mission since China's manned space program was approved and initiated, and the second crewed mission for China's space station project. After entering orbit, Shenzhou 13 conducted a fast automated rendezvous and docking at 6.56 a.m. with the station, consisting of the Tianhe core module and the Tianzhou 2 and Tianzhou 3 cargo ships. The process from launch to docking took about six and a half hours. By 9.58 a.m., the three Taikonauts entered the core module, beginning their six-month stay in orbit. On October 17th, the Taikonauts entered the Tianzhou 3 cargo ship that had docked with the station one month earlier. During their 23 days in space so far, the Taikonauts have performed daily tasks, including transferring supplies from the cargo craft, managing the space station combination, testing new spacesuits for extravehicular activities, completing in orbit medical checks, conducting weightlessness protection exercises, and carrying out space experiments. In addition to their work, the Taikonauts have been eating well and exercising. They've been provided with more than 100 kinds of food, with some recipes tailored to their personal tastes. And they've also maintained their physical health and appearance, even giving each other haircuts. Well, let's uh, also look back on the historic moment of the first spacewalk by a Chinese woman. And you can also visit our website, cgtn.com and the CGTN app for that. It's been three weeks since China's Shenzhou 13 Taikonauts were launched into space. November the 7th is the time when they carry out their first extravehicular activities. This time compared with Shenzhou 12 mission, it's more special because it involves a female astronaut and it's also China's longest crewed mission for the construction of its space station. 
A space station is made up of several modules. The first and core module of China's space station was launched in April. Officials say the future module features a smaller robotic arm to assist the larger one already in place. 而本次乘组呢将会在舱外安装双臂组合转接件和悬挂装置。During their spacewalk, the Taikonauts need to install two devices that will help the large and the small robotic arms coordinate a wider range of actions for more capabilities in the future. Walking in space is not as light as most imagine. Astronauts have to bear the weight of more than 120 kilograms of spacesuit. But experts say it's their most necessary life support system in the vacuum. 出舱作业活动呢是一项技术难度比较高、技术风险相对比较大的。Extravehicular activities have always been considered technically difficult and risky tasks. There is a pressure difference between the EVA spacesuit and the vacuum. This difference limits the flexibility of the suit and the ability of people to operate in space. Astronauts controlling body movements and robotic arms, communicating between Earth and space. Coordinating among themselves inside and outside a space module, experts say all these factors affect the success of a spacewalk. Liu Jiaxin, CGTN, Beijing. Well, as we said,、uh, this is just the、uh, first of、uh, two more of three spacewalks altogether for this、uh, Shenzhou 13 crew that's、uh, up there at the space station. They'll be there for six months. So.、Uh, We've kept Professor Yang Yuguang on with us here in the studio, Professor Yang. So、uh, we do want to pick your brains just a little bit more.、Um, so just tell us a bit more about what to expect for the next two spacewalks that's coming up for these two astronauts. Well, you know, as、rather. we already discussed, the,、uh, today we will practice everything necessary for the future construction and maintenance of our station. So they must、uh, do all kinds of、uh, movements, including the、uh, assistance of the rocketing arm,、uh, assist、uh, the astronaut move fast from one point to the other, and also we have to practice the movements of the、uh, the astronaut from one point to other along the surface of the station. And you may notice from the,、uh, their voices today that. Mr. Ye Guangfu will practice uh, uh, the the second EVA、uh, in in the in the coming、uh, in the coming months. So、uh, you know that this is also very necessary.、Uh, you know that、uh, both Ya Ping and Mr. Ye Guangfu and also Mr. Tang Hongbo belongs to the second batch of China's、uh, astronauts.、Mm-hmm. So they are、uh, generally speaking, they are about 40 years old now. So、uh, they're the same think, age. Yeah. yeah. So they will play.、Uh, I think in the future they will play a major role in China's、uh, during the operation phase of China's space station.、Mm. So they are in the golden age,、uh, young enough, strong enough, but also well experienced. So I believe in the future,、uh, Ya Ping, Guangfu, and also Hongbo ha- also have the chance uh, to uh, revisit our station during their future missions.、Mm. And、uh, as you have already asked,、uh, during the Second or the third, uh, uh, third uh, EVA, we will also、uh, continue to test the performance of our EVA spacesuit and also uh, to uh, p- uh, performing and uh, uh, accumul- accumulating our knowledge and experience in this field.、Uh, you know that the、uh, the longest duration of the record is held by the United、uh, astronauts、mm. by uh, Miss uh, Susan Helms, also a female astronaut, and another gentleman called、uh, James Walsh. They performed it. EVA about nine hours, so we still have a, a,、right. a little bit to go to catch up with them. All right. Well, Professor Yang, listen. Thank you so much. And this time we are going to let you go for real. But thank you so much for、uh, giving us all your insights、You're、and talking us、welcome. through this, Professor Yang Yuguang. So we are wrapping up our show now. Before we go, let's look back this time on the、uh, historic moment of the first spacewalk by a Chinese woman. And of course,、uh, you can visit our website cgtn.com and the CGTN app to see more on China's spacewalk. I'm Zhao Yang in Beijing. Thanks for watching. Well, go there.
。从返回舱进入轨道，航天员聂海胜、刘国明、汤洪波先后进入天河核心舱。目前在研型号当中，系统最复杂，应该说技术难度最大的一个航天器。想回来时候一定要把头扬起来，不能泪水流出来。飞得离太阳最近的人，只要有百分之五十的把握，我就敢上。下面通报返回舱第四。